Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ramp Studio Comics. Welcome back. So I've had a request to do a video on textures and uh, I thought I did this before but apparently I didn't because I couldn't seem to find one on my video list. Uh, but essentially, I think I've addressed it in other videos, but this one's going to specifically be on textures. So the reason why I brought this one up is because if you notice, there's that little hexagonal pattern in the suit. And I created that, and I'm going to show you how to do that. And then I applied it to various parts of the uh, illustration with blending modes. So this is going to be in Photoshop, but keep in mind that these effects work almost identically in the other programs. I mean, there's going to be some differences, but you should be able to get the main information here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and start a new file. Uh, really basically anything, but I'll do like uh, 9 by 18 It's kind of a widescreen format, somewhere in there, 300 DPI. It really doesn't matter. Essentially what I'm going to do is just start with one piece, and I'm going to show you how I assemble it, how I did it in this uh, other illustration of Spidey there. So we can use the polygon tool right here and you know I want you to keep in mind that you can use this any way uh, you need to but we're going to do five sides to make it a, a polygon now let's go into here uh, we don't want star and we want five sides and then, yeah, that'll give us our, our uh, pentagon polygon or no sorry we need six sides goodness that's embarrassing Okay, so there's what we need, the shape. I think that's a polygon, pentagon, hexagon, hexagon, right? God, I don't know. I'd have to look it up. Google it. How about that? Okay, so here we go. <laughs> I'm sure people are going to start chiming in the comments and let me know what it is and why I'm a big dum-dum. Um, okay, so, so what you want to do first is get it straight. So let's hit Command-R for rulers. Let's drag those down. And I'm almost straight, just a hair off. And then you want to use your pen tool to select it. Hold Command, select the whole thing. Hold Command to move it. So you grab the line, not the point. Uh, just because if you accidentally grab the point, it'll do something crazy to it. So hold Command, grab the side, move it into place. You can use Edit, Transform Path. And you can use the same transform methods that you need to, uh, like anything else. And just rotate rotate that right into place I can't talk today all right let's zoom up closer and make sure it's really on there because you know the thing I want to stress whenever you're creating a pattern if anything's wrong or off about the pattern then it's gonna kind of uh, it's gonna get worse as you progress because you're gonna be repeating and copying and, and merging these together so just keep that in mind that it really takes uh, it's really worth it to get everything just right in the beginning stage because it's only going to uh, multiply, you know, any problems you have down the, uh, the path creation or the um, pattern creation. And it's still not entirely correct. Let me get this free transform path. Now, I'm going to really zoom in here, I guess. Free transform path. Come on. Okay, that should be close enough. <laughs> That's I'm pretty zoomed in, so that should be fine, especially because this can be such a small pattern. But it's funny how you zoom back, and, and Photoshop still kind of shows you. It's just a hair off there. All right, Command H. Oh, sorry. Don't hit Command H, because that'll actually disappear the. Uh, visibility of the path itself because I haven't created it in anything. Okay, so you got a couple options here. Um, you can hit stroke and you can stroke a line around the path uh, or you can fill it. I prefer to fill it just because it's basically going to give us a shape anyways. Keep in mind that you can go into paths here and it's not really saved until you kind of drag it and drop it on there. See how it converted to path one. Now it's saved. So if I click off this and do it number of other things I can always come back to the pass area here and find it again uh, it doesn't really matter because I'm going to hurry up and create it anyways as a shape but I just want to show you that so now we can go over to here right click go fill path uh, fill it with black hit OK hit enter to release the path or usually it does 
anyways. <laughs> Making a liar out of me. Uh, hit Command H to get rid of the visibility. That seems to work. Command R to get rid of the rulers. And we've got our basic building block, okay? A lot of work, right? Just to get a little hexapentagonal, whatever this thing is. Um, but it's well worth it. So what I do generally is I'll save one at a larger file size. I'll copy a, another one over that I'm going to reduce down. Hit Command T, hold Shift so it does it uh, to scale. Because you don't want to lose your scale or anything like that. And scale it down to where you think it's going to be usable. Let's let's just start a little bit bigger uh, and do something like this. Now the reason why I do it in this fashion first is because now if I need an outline version, I can do things like stroke it. Um, <laughs> sorry, that sounded horrible. Um, but I can go layer style stroke, and I can create a colored stroke to it. I can I can color this white and put a um, a black stroke around it, and it'll just look. Um, you know, like an outline version, which is probably what I'm going to do, but I'll show you. You can do drop shadows and inset shadows, all kinds of neat stuff. So, you know, there's just lots of opportunities to, to apply effects before you make it into a full pattern or vice versa. It really doesn't, you know, it's up to you on how you decide to work with it. But essentially, let's go ahead and take this and make it like an outline version. So let's go ahead and lock transparency. Let's go ahead and fill this with white. And it looks like it disappeared. Let's go to layer style stroke. Let's stroke it. And scale that up a little bit more like that. Hit OK. Now it looks like just an outline version. And that's really what we want. And I, I like to keep this FX uh, layer going as long as possible. But let me get it where I think visually I want it. About here. Let's go back to this piece of artwork over here and kind of look at what I did there. Yeah, so I had a pretty hefty outline around it. So let's go ahead and kind of emulate that a little bit. So go back to here. Let's beef that up. Hit OK. That's close enough. It doesn't have to be identical. So now here's the fun part. You go Alt, drag it. You overlap it. And what I like to do is, is tone back the opacity of the first couple. Uh, just kind of every time I overlap it, really. And then I just want to drag that around and get it just right. Because again, everything I do is going to amplify as I progress. So hit Command E to merge that down. And sometimes it does that weird thing. So, all right, so this is something else to keep in mind. Let's go ahead and duplicate one of these to keep our layer effect. Although I probably don't need to. And let's go ahead and rasterize. I can't remember what it's called. But you basically get rid of the layer effect by... Oh, where are you? you Got to right click here rasterize layer style okay go ahead and do that to each if not for some reason it bumps up the effect to each one and hold V to move or click V hold alt and drag to make a copy and now you notice it didn't mess with the uh, the stroke like you know I wanted to make sure of and then now go ahead and tone back the opacity V to move move it into place again get it just right bump back your opacity and this starts off real slow but it picks up speed, and the other thing is this, like I've already got this pattern saved, I could have just said, hey, here's the pattern, but obviously I want to show you how to make it. Um, and I know there's lots of other fancy ways to do it, this is just how I do it, so this is the way I'm going to share with you. And I don't, I don't mind the work, I think it, like I said, it picks up speed, and it's well worth the time because it saves a tremendous amount of time as you go to make your artwork later on. Okay, so let's merge that together. So again, Command E. And let's go ahead. Now what I tend to do, I work at a large file size, but if I think I'm gonna need one of these a lot smaller, I'll just, I'll make a copy and I'll get rid of the other one. Reason being, as you scale it down, since this is a, a raster based program, every time you scale it down, you can't scale back up without getting a bit of fuzziness. See that right there? So just keep that in mind. Now. I tend to make stuff like this in Illustrator as well, just so I have it in a vector base, and then I'm good to go. I can do whatever I need to with it. EPS files are, are fantastic for that, or Adobe Illustrator files, or whatever you want to use. Uh, but things like this are worth their weight in gold. Um, of course, they weigh nothing, and I don't know if they'd really be worth the gold, but um, to just do in a vector based program. So just keep that in mind. That's really where a vector base uh, kind of excels in, in this kind of. Uh, 
creation process. Okay, so here's the thing you want to do for, for staggering it left to right. Just hold Alt, move it over, and then just you want to step it down one. And same thing. See how it keeps zooming back in and out and checking the uh, alignment. Because right there I'd have been pretty far off, and that would have shown as I start to repeat this pattern. So what it, what ends up happening is once the pattern does start to repeat, any of those small little uh, changes or imperfections are gonna you know show up like a, another pattern in between. So you got to be real careful. And sometimes you can do these cool little things where you intentionally separate them and make new effects and things like that. But we're not gonna get into that. This is just gonna be a repetitive pattern. Because these come in handy for so many different things. Uh, you know, everything from like texturizing uh, rocks. You make these different patterns. This doesn't just have to be a backdrop or a carbon fiber type pattern look or whatever. It could be uh, flooring in one of the rooms of the illustrations you're doing. So you really have to start playing around with it and thinking of all these ideas. But the, uh, the possibilities are quite endless when it comes to this type of stuff. So... Notice I'm leaving that staggering on both sides uh, because it allows me to keep moving this over and then it'll just pick up speed. So as I, if you notice, it's, you know, it's doubling each time. So it, even though it seems a little bit uh, painstaking at first, it, uh, and I'm explaining it so it's going a little slower than I would do it, you know, if I was just kind of get, getting to it, you know. So yeah, just boom, move that over. Come down the opacity, zoom back in, hit B for move. Command E to merge down, zoom back, and so on and so forth. So we're almost there. We're almost, you know, to the point where we have our full backdrop. And then I'm going to show you a couple things with the blending modes and then turn you loose and you can go out and wreak havoc into the digital world, creating your own patterns and being fancy schmancy with it all. Okay, so let's move this into place. Bump that back up. Command E. And boom. We're almost there. We're pretty much there. I'll do one more just because, you know, nothing worse than getting to the end of it and just giving up. Can't do that. Hold Alt. Move it over. Right there. You know, and, and like I said before, I'll reiterate, just save these suckers. These are, these are great to have. Uh, they're they're fantastic for digital painting. Uh, if you've got some vector-based programs, do it in a vector-based because you can scale it as big and as small as you want with no loss of clarity. So that's a big deal. Um, okay, so now I'm going to show you you know some different ways to use these with blending modes. So I'm going to go ahead and create a layer, put it beneath for now. Let's go ahead and just fill this with a a red or a reddish tone. Um, notice it's filled with white. All I got to do here is set this to multiply and it'll show through. Let's go ahead and paint. Let me grab something from my cool paint set that you can get on my gum road. <coughs> Sorry. Hairball. <laughs> no, I wouldn't have a hairball. <laughs> it would be a just a cough, hair in my throat, something. All right, so a little fade right there. Nice and easy. Whoa, what's up? I didn't want to do that. Stupid Photoshop. Okay, so go back to this. Let's add a little soft fade up here. Okay, so this is where the fun comes in. So you, you get this quick little effect back there. It's kind of cheesy, whatever. And then you take this and you go, okay, uh, what can I do to make this effect look neat? You know, uh, you can set the blending mode to any number of things. You could try, uh, and this is just where I kind of play around with this stuff. You could try overlay. Um, you see how it kind of saturates it a bit and, and adds the effect. You could try hard light. Um, no, that's not vivid light, none of that. Well, there it lets some of that red show through on the in-between. So you, you start mixing up these ideas. Um, and the other thing that you can do is, there's just darken. And so now you can take this and you can paint on top of this. Um, and you actually might want to even just get rid of the uh, the uh, middles of these. So in that case, let's see, let's go select, let's select one of them, and then go select uh, similar. Let's hit delete, hopefully it doesn't leave too bad of an edging there. 
Oh, it didn't. Good. Okay, so now you've got just the, the hexagonal pattern. So keep in mind that, you know, it's probably smart to do that on the very first one, then copy it, but we're able to get away with it, so it's no big deal. Uh, let's go ahead and take this, and let's put, um, let's just paint right on top of this. So let's go ahead and lock the uh, pixels for that layer. Let's go ahead and take the airbrush, and let's just do a, a paint effect through the middle. Um, and it's set to darken, so what we got to do is now go to screen. And so you see now we can kind of paint through the middle and add a different kind of effect, a highlight of sorts right on there. You know, maybe some little glanced off bounce light here and there. Uh, let's also take this, and now with, with just this set to the cutout of the white, we can add uh, layer effects. So let's go to layer. Now let's do a drop shadow. And anything but blue would work here. Let's do a dark drop shadow. And, you know, we can change the distance. We can soften up the edge of the blur to it. Uh, all sorts of neat things that we can do there as well. So let's hit that. And let's zoom in a bit further and see what it's starting to look like. Not too shabby. It's not uh, nothing too impressive yet. Let's try a bezel. Uh, bevel and emboss. I always like this little glass looking one right here and you, know, you play around with the depth of that as well uh, and you want to pay attention obviously to what it does in both the light and dark areas I kind of like that right there and then let's go back yeah so I mean we're already starting to get a bit of a techie kind of feel we can play with the opacity of the layer if you don't want it to like in your face or, or whatever uh, you can obviously soft erase some of it. You can apply effects over top of this. So there's all sorts of neat things that you can do. And you want to play with the blending modes of both the, the layer itself, the underlying and overlying layers, and then you're going to get all kinds of uh, neat effects. Uh, you could even do something where you take and make a co uh, copy of it with Command-J. Go fill. Uh, let's go ahead and rasterize this. Right click. Rasterize layer style. Let's do filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Let's put a little bit of a soft blur. You can even use a motion blur or something. And what I want to do here is I want to really soften up the sides, but then I want to race back through the middle. And what this will do is it'll just give the impression that only part of it is in focus. So this is a really useful technique for like enhancing your digital paintings, kind of a what I consider more post-processing or something. Uh, and I'll get rid of the, the sides because it did kind of this funky edging. You know, and, and just any number of things. So if you were to zoom in, you can see it's got a little bit more blur over here. And then as you move to the middle, it starts to kind of become more in focus. So that's about it. So like I said, there's lots of opportunities to use this type of effect with a variety of things in your digital painting, your art creation process. Hopefully this has been beneficial to you. Uh, let me know if you'd like to see a copy of the uh, the hexagonal pattern. I can post it on my Gumroad or something like that, and there'll be a link in the description below if it's something that you guys would like to have. And uh, let me know what you'd like to see in the future, and I appreciate everybody stopping by and watching this video. Give it a thumbs up if you don't mind. Follow me on Gumroad, and you can always support my work on Patreon. It allows me to keep creating videos for you and art and all that fun stuff. So, as always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.